So sometimes in mathematics, you have a number that you want to express approximately as a fraction, right? So 0 0.2, you could express as 2 tenths, or you could reduce that down to 1 fifth, right? Sometimes it makes more sense to call it 1 fifth, sometimes it makes more sense to call it 0 0.2. Or take, for example, an irrational number, like square root of 2. Maybe you want an approximation of how you might write it approximately as a fraction. Or think about pi and the famous 22 over 7 pi approximation day, where you want to have a fraction that's approximately equal to it just so you have something easy to enter into the math. Well, one way that you can find that approximate fraction for a number is the median method. And that's what we're going to look at in this code today. So the goal of this code is for a given number. So we put in the number, maybe you, you know what the number is, maybe you get it from some complicated calculation. We're going to find a rational number given by numerator over denominator, right? So the way you write a rational number is one integer divided by another. That's the best approximation of that number within a span of accuracy that you're looking for. And we're going to be most interested in trying irrational or even transcendental numbers. So well, let's start with our favorite irrational number, pi. This is going to be the number to find. We want to find a fraction that is pretty close to pi. Well, we're going to do this in two pieces, right? So pi has a 3.14159, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What we want to do is separate out the, the lead, the stuff before the decimal place, and the stuff after the decimal place. So first, we're going to take the integer part of the number. So for pi, we're going to take off the 3. So we're going to have the 0 0.14159, etc. The digits after the decimal point is going to be this x. So x is a number between 0 and 1 that we are interested in finding. I suppose you could do a negative number, uh, then we'd have to change the code a little bit. So I guess we better make this a positive number. Just a little note there. And I suppose if we really wanted to enforce that, we could take number equals absolute value of number, comment, I said positive. Okay, so this x is going to be the part that we're interested in finding, because that's the part that needs the fraction, right? The stuff before the fraction, I know how to write as a rational number, because that's automatically an integer. It's the stuff after the decimal place that I want to find out how to write. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a guess to the left of the number and a guess to the right of the number, and we're going to bracket it, right? So somewhere out there on the number line between 0 and 1, there is the remainder of pi. There is pi minus 3. And so if I start at 0 and 1, I can bracket my way to that number, getting a more accurate guess each time. So each of these numbers we're going to be guessing is a rational number. So we're going to have a numerator on the left and a denominator on the left, and we're going to have a numerator on the right and a denominator on the right. So think of it as fraction on the left, fraction on the right. Each one has a different numerator and denominator. And what are we going to start with? We have to pick two values to start with. Well, if we subtract it off the integer part, we know that this number lies between 0 and 1, so I can just start with 0 and 1 as my guesses. So my guess on the left is going to be 0 divided by 1. That's 0, last time I checked. And numerator on the right, 1, divided by denominator on the right, 1. So that's going to be 1. So we're going to start with 0 and 1. We're guaranteed to catch whatever this x is. So the first guess we're going to take, we're always just going to go halfway in between. Well, except it's not exactly halfway, right? Because halfway would technically be the average of those two. But if I average the two, I'm losing the information about the numerator and the denominator. So we're going to call this halfway in quotation marks. This is the median method here, where you do fraction addition wrong, right? The way you're supposed to do fraction addition is you find a common denominator. Once you have a common denominator, then you add the two modified numerators together over the common denominator and do any reduction that you need to. Not so with the median method. The median method is based on adding fractions wrong. And that's why I was really intrigued by this method, because in the median method, you get your next guess by adding the two numerators and adding the two denominators. And all the fifth grade math teachers are shuddering in their chairs right now. But you wait, wait a second, it's going to work. Because the beauty of this method is now we can keep track of what the different numerator and denominator are, right? Because we have that information stored. So here we're going to set a tolerance value. This is the accuracy we're looking to get at with this, uh, with this bracketing method. 
And so we're going to start out with 0.01. Very simple. This will get us out to 3.14, right? Okay, so we're going to now set up a loop. This is called a while loop. The while loop is going to run as long as the thing in parentheses is true. So as long as x and the guess, the, the correct answer and our guessed answer, is greater than tolerance, as long as we are more than tolerance off, we got to keep repeating. We got to keep doing this. So first we're going to evaluate uh, whether the guess is to the right of x. If, if the guess is to the right of x, then we have a new right guess because the previous right guess is too far over and we now need to get the next right guess that's going to be closer to x. So we change the numerator on the right and the denominator on the right. We leave numerator on the left and denominator on the left alone, but we take these two, this numerator here and this denominator here, that's now the guess on the right. Otherwise, we must be to the left of the number, in which case we're going to update numerator on the left and denominator on the left. You notice that the right-hand side of this equation is the same in each case. It's just a question of whether you're updating your number on the right or updating your number on the left. Then we make a new guess, right? We just repeat this guess value and we keep going until we've achieved the tolerance difference. Okay, so then we create our final denominator, right? Our final denominator is going to be left plus right, and our final numerator is going to be left plus right plus the lead value, right? We need to be able to recover that leading decimal place, that the, the stuff to the left of the decimal that we subtracted off earlier. So we're going to multiply that by denominator so that it now can go into a common denominator. And then we're going to have the code print for us the fraction, numerator over denominator, and it'll show us uh, the what the two decimals look like. So this quotation mark here means we're printing this whole thing as a string. Uh, this, just the slash here, means we're printing this thing as a calculated number. So let's see what fraction we get for pi to within 0.1. Not really a surprise, we get 22 over 7, right? This is this famous approximation for pi. Uh, I remember seeing it as a recommendation on the SAT if you're looking for a, an approximation for pi. It gives us a 3.14286, whereas pi is 3.14159, right? So it fails out here in the third decimal place because our tolerance was 0 0.01. So after 0 0.01, it can differ, but this is guaranteeing we get it out to the second decimal place. So 22 over 7 is the best fraction to get you 3.14, because 22 over 7 is 3.14, and pi is 3.14-ish, right? So if you want to make this better, you can decrease the tolerance. So for example, you can make this uh, get cut in half. Let's suppose we make this 5 times 10 to the minus 3, so 0.005. Now we get a little bit better in math, right? Now it's, uh, oh, excuse me, we do not get a better match. We're still stuck on 22 over 7 because it's actually a really good match, right? It gets down to probably 10 to the minus 3. 10 to the minus 3, it's still good. What about 5 times 10 to the minus 4? Okay, so at that point we jump up. We go to 267 over 85. You notice both the numbers got bigger, right? Because the answer still has to come out the same. So we took 22 and we multiplied it by a little more than 10. We took seven and multiplied it by a little more than 10. And basically by honing in on this next fraction, uh, we're able to get a better approximation. Now I have 3.1412, 3.1415. That's a little bit closer. Uh, let's say I want to be accurate to within 10 to the minus four. Now I get down to 333 over 106. Now I've got that 1415. Here I've got the 1415. Oh, except this is really a 1416. So maybe we better go to 10 to the negative 5. And basically what's happening, we don't see this going on, but the code itself is making more loops, right? So one of the ways we could keep track of this would be to uh, keep track of number of iterations equals zero. And then each time we reach the end here, we increase number of iterations by one. Right? And then at the end, we could say uh, this took comma in iterations, comma iterations. Iterations is just a word for however many times it goes over the loop. So in order to get down to 3.1415, we had to go 21 iterations. On the other hand, to get to the 22 over 7, the famous uh, 22 over 7, uh, it only takes five iterations. So the code has to run four times as long. We don't notice it because each of these loops is taking microseconds. Uh, but eventually it adds up, right? If I make this 10 to the minus eight, we might be here 
A while? Let's try. Okay, we weren't here a while, but that did take 304 iterations. So it's actually going out farther than the thing is printing, right? This is only one, two, three, four, five decimal places. Uh, we are now accurate to eight decimal places, so more than the code is showing us. Uh, but what you notice, again, the numbers have to get bigger, right? They have to get larger so that we can have a little bit more refinement over these rough approximations. Uh, and you can do this with any number, right? Uh, this doesn't have to be pi. Maybe you're doing the famous e to the pi minus pi. Uh, famously, this value is just under 20. There's an XKCD comic about uh, this value being approximately 20. So we've got a 19.9991, um, I wonder, I wonder if we can go low enough to where this thing thinks that 20 is fine. Uh, sure enough, with with a with a tolerance of 10 to the minus one, you get 199 over 10 which is almost 200 over 10. So we're almost at 20 just after 10, uh, just after eight iterations. Maybe we change this to a 0 0.5 to, to be accurate than a half. We get 39 over two, which is about 40 over two, which is 20. Uh, let's try 0.75. Can we get this thing to 20 over one? I don't know. Yeah, no, we can't do that because even after zero iterations, it guesses a 19.5 yeah yeah because it's always going to guess a half as the uh as the first part so anyway that is a code to show off the mediate method again this wrong way of adding fractions actually turns out to be a pretty good way to get a rational number approximation for any irrational number that you come across oh let's try one more let's try one more let's try square root of two and let's go to one point, uh, excuse me, let's go to one E negative five. 577 over 408. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. Okay, anyway, I hope that's fun to you. This is a really neat method. Uh, I did not learn this in uh, in K through 12, so I, I, I hope this, you know, reaches some folks who might find this interesting. And if you ever find yourself making this mistake, just tell people you're not wrong, you're just using the mediant method.